The demonstration of the tea serving at this point is the climax of the ceremony. Hello everyone, and welcome to Let's Ask Shogo. There are many people, including Japanese, who believe that tea ceremony is just about drinking tea. But actually, drinking tea is just one part of the tea ceremony. And the full tea ceremony takes about four hours. You don't want to be sitting with your legs folded and drinking tea for four hours, right? So today, as a tea ceremony trainee in Kyoto, I will explain what goes on during the four hours of the full tea ceremony. This video will help you deepen your understanding towards Japanese tea ceremony and give you a clearer image of the important culture of Japan. The most important part of drinking matcha comes in at the latter half of the tea ceremony. So I hope you can stay till the end to find out. And even if you get confused during the story, that's okay. I will wrap everything up again at the end of the video in today's conclusion. So let's go to Before we start talking about what happens during the basic tea ceremony, let me first explain that there are actually many different types of tea ceremonies. They can be distinguished by three points. One, how many people will join? Two, what time it will take place? Three, which style you belong to? One, how many people will join? A basic tea ceremony can only have a maximum of five guests. And on the host side, there are usually two helpers who support the main host. If there are more than five guests, it will be a simpler style of ceremony with food boxes for the meal or just one type of matcha, omitting some of the procedures. There is even a kind of a very simple tea ceremony where more than 100 to 1,000 people can join in one day. In those cases, the tea ceremonies can be held outside or on tables and chairs. Two, what time it will take place. A basic tea ceremony should start at noon. However, there are special ceremonies, for example, that take place in very early summer morning or after dark in a winter night. At these irregular times, the tools that are used during the ceremony and the procedures are a little different. Three, which style you belong to. There are about 20 styles in the tea ceremony and every form has different ways of running the tea ceremonies. However, the three main styles called Sansenke, which are inherited by the descendants of Sennorikyu, the founder of tea ceremony, share many things in common. The style I'll be explaining today is the basic form of the three main styles. However, the details are different among the three styles too. So I will explain just the broad image of the tea ceremony. Number one, the guests gathering together. Now, let's start talking about how the tea ceremony actually moves on. The guests will first gather together in the waiting room of the tea house at the designated time around noon. They obviously must not come late, but also not too early either, because you might make the host rush in order for preparation. Once all the guests have arrived, the helper of the host will each serve the guests a cup of hot water. This is for the guests to quench their thirst and also relax before the tea ceremony begins. After all the guests have arrived and finished drinking the hot water, they will leave the waiting room to move to a different waiting area outside. Why do they have to move from one waiting room to another waiting area? It is believed that by walking through the garden to move to the second waiting area will cleanse one's mind and body, withdrawing you from the mundane world. It may be difficult to understand through exclamation, but from my own experience, 
I can say that this moment of walking through the garden is surely relaxing. And you do feel like you're coming into a different world. Number two, the hosts welcoming the guests enter the tea room. After a while, the host will come and greet the guests. This is when the guests will see the host for the first time that day. However, at this point, the hosts and guests will not speak a word, but simply bow to each other quietly. Why don't they speak? This is due to the philosophy and virtue of the tea ceremony. It's best that the people joining the ceremony speak the least as possible in order to enjoy the sounds of nature. Please take a look at my other video about the philosophies and virtues of tea ceremonies for more information. After the host returns to the tea house, the guests finally head to the tea room. However, they must wash their hands and mouth, just like you do at the shrines to purify themselves. The guests will enter the room one by one as they quietly examine the hanging scroll and the pottery the host has carefully chosen for that day. Once everyone has seen the items and have taken a seat, the host will appear to say his or her greetings to each guest. The first guest, called Shokyak, the most experienced or aged person, will ask the host about the garden and the hanging scroll at this point. So this means the timing when the hosts and guests can speak and who can speak are all fixed too. Number three, burning the charcoal, eating kaiseki, and the main sweet. From here, the procedure will differ depending on the season. If it is a cold season, the charcoal will be prepared first. And if it is a warm season, the kaiseki course meal will be served first. This is simply because in autumn and winter, it's cold. So it's better to warm the tea room as soon as possible. But in spring and summer, it'll be too hot. Many Japanese people, including myself before I started training, don't know that preparing the charcoal to heat the pots in front of the guests is part of the tea ceremony. It is to adjust the temperature of the room and the hot water at the right timing, and also to burn the incense together with the charcoal. The coarse meal you eat in tea ceremonies is the well-known kaiseki. Kaiseki is now famous at many traditional restaurants in Kyoto, but it originally is meant to be eaten during the tea ceremonies to enjoy the matcha more. You don't want to drink thick matcha with high amounts of caffeine with an empty stomach because it may cause damage to your body. The concept of this coarse meal comes from the traditions of Zen monks. Kai means the inside of one's cloth, and Seki means stone. Like the Kaito is the short hidden katana inside women's cloth of the samurai class in case of emergencies. But wait, there's nothing about food. The Zen monks in the past were only allowed to have one meal per day in the morning. So at night, they will become very hungry and their body temperature will drop. In order to endure the starvation and coldness, they would keep a stone warmed up with fire or hot water in their clothes. So the kaiseki course meal is meant to serve simple food that fills your hunger and warms up your body. You will be served with things like rice, miso soup, simmered vegetables, cooked fish, and so on. The guests will also be served some sake as well, meant to relax and purify your body. However, I will not explain any more than this because I will probably have to make a whole other video just to do so. Every meal comes in a fixed row and there are many rules and manners that the guests must understand to properly eat everything. After the meal is over, the host will serve the main sweet. The tea sweets are a very important part of the tea ceremony, as it represents the beauty of nature and festivals of each season. It is also meant to enhance the flavors of matcha tea by having something sweet 
before it. If you'd like to know more about the kind of tea sweets that are eaten in each season, I hope you can check out my Introducing Seasonal Tea Sweets series. Number four, a short break. After the guests have had the main sweets, the host must get on with the next preparations. And the guests need a break too to stretch out their legs. The guests will leave the tea room once to wait outside again at the waiting area. At this timing, the host will change the hanging scroll to flowers. Once the host is ready, he or she will ring a small gong to let the guests know. Why doesn't the host just come to tell them that everything is ready? It's the same reason why they didn't speak at the very first time they met. It's to avoid speaking as much as possible. After the guests listen to the sounds of the gong, they will again purify their hands and mouth and re-enter the tea room as they examine the flowers. Number five, drinking the two kinds of matcha. Finally, at the very last part of the tea ceremony, the matcha will be served. You don't drink just one kind of matcha, but actually two different kinds called koicha, the thick tea, and usucha, the thin tea. The koicha represents its name with its thickness. It's almost like espresso coffee. The demonstration of the tea serving at this point is the climax of the ceremony. No one will speak and everyone focuses on the sounds of heating the water, pouring hot water, and kneading the tea. Once everyone starts to drink though, the first guest, Shokyak, will meanwhile ask the host about the brand and manufacturer of the matcha and the name of the main sweet they enjoyed earlier. After the koicha has been served to everyone, the host will add charcoal and burn incense again. This time, the usucha thin tea will be served, which is much easier to drink than the koicha. The subsweet called higashi will be served first, and then the host will start the demonstration of the tea serving again. Unlike the koicha, the usucha tea serving will be done in a relaxed atmosphere. After the guests have enjoyed the matcha, they can ask the host to examine the tea utensils as well. Each bowl, tea caddies, and tea scoop are all carefully chosen by the host, especially for the guests. In order to express your gratitude and respect, the guests will enjoy watching these utensils as they examine them with the utmost care not to damage them. Now that everyone has finished their matcha and enjoyed the beauty of each utensil, it is time for the tea ceremony to end. After the guests leave the tea room, they will bow lastly towards the host, who has seen them off at the entrance of the tea room. This is how a basic four hour long tea ceremony goes. Then lastly, today's conclusion. I introduced how a basic four-hour tea ceremony of the three main styles goes on. One, the guests gathering together. The guests will not arrive late nor too early at the waiting room. Once every guest has arrived, they will move to the waiting area outside through the garden. Two, the host welcomes the guests entering the tea room. The host will soon meet the guests for the first time when he or she greets them there. The guests will purify their hands and mouth, enter the tea room, and examine the hanging scroll and pottery chosen for that day. After the guests take their seats, the host will show up to greet each guest this time. 3. Burning the charcoal, eating kaiseki, and the main sweet. The host will prepare the charcoal for the pot and serve kaiseki course meal. The meal is meant to satisfy the guest's appetite in order to enjoy the matcha, which comes later. After finishing the meal, the main sweet, also meant to enhance the flavor of the matcha tea, will be served. 4. A short break. The guests will step outside to the waiting area again for a break, while the host changes the hanging scroll to flowers. 
the host will ring the gong to welcome the guests back into the tea room. And the guests, after hearing the sound, will wash their hands and mouth again to re enter. Five, drinking two kinds of matcha. Finally, the guests will drink two kinds of matcha called koicha and uscha. The koicha tea serving demonstration is the climax of the tea ceremony. Everyone will focus on the sounds of the water and procedures in peace. After the koicha, the dry sweets and usucha is served to loosen up the atmosphere before the whole ceremony ends. Once all of the guests have enjoyed the two kinds of matcha, it's time for them to leave. The guests will bow lastly towards the host, who will see off the guests at the entrance of the tea room until he or she cannot see the guests anymore. So that's it for today. Thank you very much for watching. And my goal is to achieve 100,000 subscribers by January 2022, so your help would mean a lot. In this channel, you can take a closer look at Japanese traditional culture, tips on traveling to Kyoto, and social problems of Japan. So, learners and lovers of Japanese language and culture, be sure to subscribe to enjoy more content. Thanks again, and I'll see you in my next video. Domo, arigatou gozaimashita. なんでなんでなんでなんでなんでお父さん撮り始めてたんやで実はそうひなた似たような顔してるねママママとこ行くなんでママもこっちひなたママとこ行くはい<笑><笑>